Hello everyone, and welcome to video 22 in the Ableton Tips and Tricks video series. Today I'm going to discuss subtractive and additive EQ, and then demonstrate it during the mixing phase. One of the first things you should know is that a good mix results from a good recording. If there's any distortion or digital clipping in stems you receive or are mixing yourself, that cannot be covered up or undone. Uh, crap in, crap out as we say when we're mixing. So let's get started. What I'm going to do today is work with the track we worked with in video 21. What I'm going to do is solo out bass pulse 2 and the main kick. And I'm going to play them together. So I like the way it sounds, but what I want to do is actually add a little bit more brightness to the bass pulse, and I want to add a little bit of extra clap or crack to the kick itself. And that's what I'm going to do with additive and subtractive EQ. I'll demonstrate additive on the main kick. I'll instantiate EQ8. What I'm going to do is just solo out the main kick, and I'm going to do a sweeping technique and move the frequency band around accordingly until I find a frequency that I like. And then I'll bring it down and EQ appropriately. So I like where it is here. I'm going to increase the Q just around two. And then I'm going to give it a value of 2 dB and bring it down. So I like the way how the kick is sounding now, but now what I want to do, now that I've added, is subtract some from bass pulse 2. I'm going to solo this out, instantiate EQ8, and I'm going to put this before the compressor because I actually prefer to EQ before I compress. So what I'm going to first do is instantiate the first EQ band, which is actually a high pass filter, and I'm going to drag it all the way up, play the clip, and I'm going to start pulling it back as appropriate until I find the right frequencies I'm looking for and the sound I'm looking for. So I like the way it sounds right there. I'm going to disable the third band because I don't need it. And now what I'm going to do is go to band six, make this a high shelf, and I'm going to increase the gain slightly. And then probably bring it back to 7.72 kilohertz in the frequency spectrum. And I will leave it there. So that's what it sounds like. What you've actually seen me do is I've subtracted all of these frequencies in the low end that are not necessary for this sound in particular, and then I've added a little bit of brightness with the sixth band, and I've added EQ. On the main kick, I've also added a little bit, and now what I'm going to do is play them with and without their EQs. with and without with without now on the kick this is with without with without. So the difference is probably the most noticeable in the bass pulse 2, and the reason you do that is because I get rid of all of those low frequencies because that is something that would start competing with things I'll add in later like sub bass and possibly other percussion. So I get rid of all of them there because no one is going to notice it when I start bouncing it down to a stereo file and then start the mastering process. If it's correct in the mix, it's going to sound good on the master. So that concludes this video. Uh, hopefully this helps you with your mixing process. Take care and thanks for watching.